Questions here? Yes? So, um, so an example of head-first language is English, an example of head-last language is Japanese. I personally don't know Japanese, but basically um, what's, what's going on is that, um, so we had, for instance, gave the voters a surprise. There the head is first. Gave is the head, right? That's the, the main verb that's defining what's going on in that verb phrase. If it's head-last, then you wouldn't say gave the voters a surprise. You would say the sentence would go, the voters a surprise gave, and that would be the word order you have in Japanese. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yes? Um, that's the same thing with like, like some languages where the adjective, uh, where the adjective comes before the noun, and in some other languages the adjective comes after the noun. Spanish? Yeah. Um, no, th that's a different thing. Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we're just about out of time, but you know, what's the significance of the super rules of language? They define the basic principles by which all languages are constructed. Right. That's the significance. You don't need to know the exact super rules, but I do want you to know that the super rules define the basic principles by which all languages are constructed. How do children acquire the super rules of language? They have them innately in this sort of language module, right? They, they, they're born with these super rules, essentially. And what are the parameters that vary from language to language? It's, it's you know, the head first or head last and prepositions and postpositions. If you have head last, then you'll have postpositions. If you have head first, you have prepositions. And how do children acquire the parameters for a specific language? They acquire it through experience, you know, by, by listening to, to their parents or to, to other people speaking, and then they, they learn the parameters along with the specific vocabulary. Okay, so um, we'll continue with this on Friday. Thanks.